Please stop the video and copy down the problem. After that, resume watching the video. So the problem says that you have a, um, a small object uh, traveling at a constant speed of 10 meters per second, and it collides with another uh, object which is stationary at the base of an incline. Uh, the second object is more massive, one, two kilograms, and um, it is initially at rest, and it is at the base of the incline, which is uh, 30 degrees. Um, we can make some assumptions here. Uh, we can ignore the transition between the horizontal motion and the incline motion. Uh, just pretend that it's a smooth motion. Um, and it says that the collision is perfectly inelastic. That means that the two objects stick together. And it also says that we should ignore friction. The question is, how far up, up the incline will the uh, system travel? So let's get rid of the problem. Get that out of the way. OK, clean the screen. And um, so some ideas here. Um, the first thing that happens is that the collision occurs. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm planning out how to solve this problem. Um, so once the collision occurs, the system then moves up the incline. So as that happens, there is a energy conversion. So that's the approach I'm going to take in solving this problem. I want to find out how far up the incline does the object or the system, the two objects, um, travel. So let's begin um, uh, at the beginning of the sequence of events uh, with the collision. So we know that, that the conservation, uh, that the momentum is conserved, so uh, the total initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum. Uh, only the small object uh, has momentum at the beginning. So the initial momentum would be m1 v1 i. And then the final momentum would be that of the system. So the system is m1 plus m2. And it has a final velocity. Um, actually, I call that v2. Let's just call it v final. OK. So uh, let's start plugging in the numbers. So we have uh, mass of 1 initially moving at 10 meters per second. And then we have mass of 1, which is combining with mass of 2. And that has a final velocity. And if we solve that, final velocity of the system is 3.3 meters per second. OK, it's going to be tra the system will travel slower. Uh, because the system is heavier than the, um, than the first object. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to find out how far does it travel out, up the incline. So we're going to use conservation of energy. We're done with momentum. So um, let's do that over here. So the sum of the initial energy is equal to the sum of the final energy. There is no work, uh, let's write that down here, there's no work done by uh, conservative forces. Uh, there is, that's zero because there is no friction. If there was friction, that would just be an extra step in the problem solving process. Okay, so let's expand this. Um, so initially, we have uh, kinetic energy of the system, right? They're already combined. And they have a velocity, initial velocity squared. Now, that velocity is this right here. So that's the velocity that we're talking about. And um, then that combined system is going to gain gravitational potential energy. Uh, so 
basically all of the kinetic energy is converted into gravitational potential energy. And we see that we can eliminate the masses for this part of the problem. Mass doesn't matter. Um, so now we just plug and chug. So we have 1 half times 3.3 3 squared is equal to 9.8 h. So the height works out to 0.56 meters. That's how far it climbs uh, vertically. But it asks you, the question asks, how far do you go up the incline? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll draw the incline itself. We see that the object climbed up 0.56 meters and the angle is 30 degrees, so we want to solve for D. Um, how far did it climb up combined system? Okay, so we're just going to be using trig. So uh, we know that the height is going to be equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. Um, so D will be equal to 0.56 divided by the sine of theta, so d is equal to 1.1 meters.